so I so talked about a number of fascinating themes on this, from the Arab Spring to rugged individualism to government. De Tocqueville famously said that one of the great geniuses of American society was civic institutions. Right now, everything from little leagues to PTAs to YMCAs. I want you guys to reflect on the future of American civic institutions in light of a number of major trends, right? One, the number of unaffiliated millennials. Uh, historically, religious communities have been a major driver of civic institutions. Two is the rise of the internet. Uh, three is uh, the decline in trust of all institutions, period. Four is perhaps the sexiness of revolution versus trying to build something over 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Many other trends as well. My big question is, in 30 or 40 years, are we going to have the same kind of civic institutional structure in the United States that we do right now? Heather or Christina, do you want to first take first crack? That's a really good question. And I spend a lot of my time trying to convince people to vote. And I would add to that list the party affiliation. So they're no longer identifying Democrats or Republicans, but independently. And so you're, lo you're losing that infrastructure and that sense of community as well. Um, I think that they will reshape what it looks like. I think they are continuing to gather together and take collective action, but just through very different institutions. Right now, that is often online uh, and through these social networks that they're building. Um, and it's uh, connected not just locally, but also in other states across the country, and then, in fact, quite globally as well. Uh, I, I don't know what that will turn into, but it's an interesting question. And Christina, I wonder what you think. I mean, I think that what we have seen with the immigrant youth community, it's that if it's not there for us, we have to build it. Mm -hmm. And we have to create the spaces for us. You know, with, even within the immigrant advocacy community, there wasn't space for youth empowerment. And at some point, a group of us decided we need to create space for young people to make our choices, to drive our agendas, to organize and create a, a difference and, and have an impact. And that's what we did with the United We Dream Network. Actually, what we're experiencing with immigrant youth in our constituency is that from 2008, we, we had seven affiliate organizations. We have 52 in 25 states today. So there is a real hunger to belong, to be part of a network. And I am not such a Debbie Downer about like Facebook and Twitter because those are the tools that are given us a sense of connection, even with young people in Egypt, yeah. right? Um, leading their social movement. So I think from my, from my perspective, I see millennials and, and dreamers in particular using social networking tools to our advantage and being able to be as innovative as to think that in the next five to 10 years, when we think of the possibility of immigration reform, and you're talking about 11 million people who are living in the shadows, what is the opportunity that young people have and that organizations have and the government institutions have to get those folks engaged? And that's where we see the opportunity to do that. Mark, did you want to add something? Yeah, I think I mean, what we're talking about largely, Ibu, is the role of what I would call intermediary organizations in society. And history shows us that the bigger and more powerful government gets, the less of those organizations we have, the less organized they are, and the less powerful they are because uh, necessary to the existence of those organizations is power. I mean, we're, really what we're talking about is the distribution of power throughout society. So the more intermediary organizations have power, the stronger they'll be. I mean, you see that in the Immigrants' Rights Network. It's, it's the feeling that they can actually accomplish something, that what they do makes a difference fundamentally in how we live. That's what makes these organizations strong. We can organize all the organizations we want, but if they're disempowered, if they're simply structures for communication, then people won't participate in them.